Office Wife. The story of the girl who married her boss and of the girl who took over. Harry Palmer opens the next chapter of Office Wife. You know that old saying to the effect that if you ride a tiger, you can't let go? Well, that's what I'm doing with Angela Tennant. Oh, how that woman can claw! I'm under her thumb, you know. And up to a point, I didn't mind a scrap. Because she can be a lot of use to me in one way or another. But now she wants to take charge. She's saying I have to push Marcia's divorce along and marry her at the double or else think up a good reason to borrow from her just so that I can pass the shekels along. Oh, she's not only hard, she's greedy. And I tell you, I'll have to do something about Angela Tennant before she ruins the whole show. Yes, I'll have to do something about Marcia. Harry Palmer, I ask you to dinner. Uncle and Aunt Harriet go to the theatre and leave us alone, and all you can do is sit there with your head in your hands. Either talk to me or put some records on or... Or do something. I, I'm sorry. I, I was thinking. What is it, anyway? Well, I'm looking ahead three long, dreary years before we can be married, darling. Oh, that. Oh, darling, surely you could speed things up a little. No, Harry. I won't hear of it. But, Marcia, this... This is driving me crazy. Don't you realize how I feel about you? You could get your marriage dissolved so easily. Harry... Do you want us to quarrel? You know there's nothing in the world I want less. Then please don't go on and on. All right. I won't say any more. You can be an obstinate little thing, can't you? Perhaps. I'm going to be obstinate over this. I wish you were as impatient as I am, Pet. It wouldn't make a scrap of difference. Darling, mm? do you ever give Jeff and Stella a thought these days? Why? I was just thinking how odd it'd be if, um... Well, you remember that cove who tipped my glass over the other night? Well, wouldn't it be odd if Jeff and Stella weren't prepared to wait three years? You see, darling, what you're not prepared to do to them, they might already be trying to do to you. How do we know they're not having you watched? Oh, good Lord, Harry. I hadn't thought of that. Oh, she's as stubborn as 40 mules, Angela. She won't budge an inch. Not even when I threw a scare into her about Jeff and Stella taking matters out of her hands. What? You mean having a watch to something? Yes. Strange that you should mention that. Huh? Why? Come over here to the window. Turn out the light first. What are you playing at? Cops and robbers? Oh, do as I say. Now, come over here. See that car? What? The sedan across the road? It's just parked there, and the character inside just sits and smokes. Well, hang it all. So do I sometimes. I'll put the light on, and don't be so darn silly. But this is the second night, and someone's been asking questions about me at the shop on the corner. I know, because they take my bets, and I get on pretty well with the man who runs it. I don't like the sound of that. Who could it be, Harry? We'd want to watch my flat. Jeff could. That's what I've been thinking. I'm scared. I have a hunch. The other night a chap deliberately took a good look at Marcia and me and... Uh, look, I'll tell you about it later. I'll be back in a minute. Where are you going? I want to see if it's the same code. Oh, I'll have to be more careful. Jeff Pilgrim's determined enough to have me watched. 
Tama. I say, uh, excuse me, could you give me a light? I, I, I said, uh, would you mind obliging me with a match? Oh, oh that was stupid of me. I have my lighter. Would you care for a se uh, Hey, hey, wait a minute. Hang on. I didn't get a look at him. Confound it, I didn't see his face then. If we are being watched... Good Lord. What's the best way out of this? Look here, Jeff. When are you going to stop insisting that I either drive about with you or, or meet you in these beastly little dives? Yes, it is getting a bit ridiculous, I suppose. Of course it is. Now tell me about Angela Tennant. What are we going to do about her? She and Palmer operate like a... like an adagio team. We're sure of that. One makes a move, the other knows about it in advance. I'd rather set a snare for Angela than Palmer. Why? Well, easier game. Palmer's as wily as a ferret. <laughs> don't kid yourself that Angela's any shrinking sweet innocent. I don't. But it so happens that she keeps a diary. Lying open for us all to read. What wouldn't I give to get my hands on it, Stella? Just for ten minutes. Oh, think of something, there's a good lass. <laughs> Get yourself a bunch of skeleton keys and a jemmy and set yourself up as Bill Sykes. No, no. I'm serious. Well, so am I, darling. Hang it. I haven't been kissed for weeks. And Angela Tennant will keep. Look, Jeff Angel. Something very subtle is happening to you. You're getting just a little bit... Well, not tough exactly, but... Sort of... Unfeeling. Oh, why shouldn't I? No. That's only self-pity. The least abnormal... I've heard you say it before. Well, it's still true. Jeff, you have a wonderful job now, thanks to Benny. Better than you've ever had before. Marcia's out of your life. And a few years won't take so terribly long to pass. Call it a day, Jeff. Put Palmer and Angela and the Bendigos out of your head forever. And start all over again. With me, Jeff. You'll be happier. And I'd have to be blind not to see that you aren't happy now. I'll grind Palmer's face on the pavement outside the Bendigo building before I'm finished, Stella. And make yourself thoroughly miserable in the process. Jeff, look at me. Oh, it's no use. Oh, I know. I have nothing to complain of at work and that, but... I'm still under a cloud and... Well, I don't like it. I go into places I always went before, for a pot of beer after work sort of thing, and, and I catch myself slinking, automatically going to the other end of the bar, so I won't have to nod to coves I went to school with. Is that all? Tell me honestly. No. Well, come on, say it. Well, Harry Palmer's running about with my wife. With her family's approval. I thought so. Come on, drive me home. If I had an ounce of sense or a pennyweight of courage, I'd tell you to go to the devil and mean it. But that's the trouble, Jeff. I haven't. There he is, Angela. That's his car. If you hop to it, you can get up to his flat while he's putting his car away. I don't know. But I'm so keen on the idea. He should be tackling Jeff, not me. How can I get near him? He won't talk to me, you know that. Now, do your stuff. You said you would half an hour ago. Well, all right, but... But I don't like it. How does it feel to be hiding behind my skirts, Harry, dear boy? You'll make one crack 
too many one of these days, Angela. Hello, Geoffrey. I've been waiting for you. Well, 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 Angela Tennant. If it's not too much to ask, what are you doing hanging about outside my flat at 11 o'clock at night? Can I talk to you here, or shall we go inside? I think here will do very nicely, thanks. Now, what's on your mind? But you can make it brisk. I want to know what's the big idea having me watched and followed. Followed? Followed where? Anywhere. Just followed. What game are you playing this time? Why should I want to follow you? I'm going to run you and your pal Palmer into the ground one day, Angela. And it won't be by chasing you about like a dog after a couple of alley cats. Now clear out of here. Then you're not... It wasn't any one of yours tonight. I won't even answer you. But I want to know. If it was you... All right, no, it was not. Do you think I have nothing better to do than follow you or Palmer, you pair of dingy chiselers? I'm going in. You can do what you like. But next time you come creeping around here, Angela, don't be surprised if I turf you out by the scrub of your neck. Phew, that was no act. I think I better beat it back to Harry's car, but quickly. Hmm. Well, if it wasn't Pilgrim Stooge tonight, who is after us? Couldn't be Bendigo. Couldn't be Marcio. Or Stella Bronson. And who does that leave? Only Benny Puller. But what possible reason could he have for setting a gumshoe on Angela Tennant and me? And this is going to take some looking into. We invite you to listen to further episodes of Office Wife, written by L.J. Hardy, a Donovan Joyce production. <laughs> <laughs>